All right, now today we want to talk about uh, some more of these uh, instigators and what they do and, and wh how we use them and when we use them and if we should use them. That's the question with some people. Uh, if I blow half my breath out, I get... <sighs> Hear that sound? It makes my voice sort of pick up some much more frontal type sound. See? I go... Un dia l'azzurro spazio guarda il profondo. It puts me in a spinto technique. Spinto comes from spingere, which means to push. If I blow half my breath out, I can't get the breath to come out to sing unless I squeeze my ribcage and actually send the breath out, or if you want to use the word, push the breath out, see? So if I go, and I'm empty, or half empty, how am I going to get the breath out? So I go, and the voice gets very much, uh, 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 right? Uh, if you have a lyric voice, you should avoid that like the plague. If you have a lyrical spinda voice, which I did and have some of it still, uh, then I don't suffer the damage that you will that you will suffer if you're a lyric singer and you put that much compression on your voice. Lyric singers breathe in and go, ah, Spindle singers go, There are two different breathing and support methods that cause certain kinds of vocal cords to respond in a certain way. The lyric voice always wants that beautiful round color, if they can get it, what the Italian is called chiaroscuro. The spindle voices tend to get much more, uh, a higher percentage of chiaro, which means bright or clear, than the scuro, which means dark or round or mellow. So if I'm going to use these instigators, I'm going to have to watch out what I'm doing. And that's why breathing is so important. Breathing is everything. If I don't breathe, I make a sound. If I do breathe, I make a sound. And how I breathe, if I breathe up here, <sighs> it's got my sound, affects my sound like mad. If I breathe down behind me, and go, hala, hala. Now the hala is another intensifier, right? Like, ah, ah, I blow my breath out and squeeze. Ah. Ah, then I decide I'm going to take a deep breath and do something to get the intensification going on my diaphragms. So I go, hello, and you hear some great singers do that. They'll put a huh in front of the music, in front of the phrase, like that. And they do this in the diaphragm before each phrase. Some fingers for a high note will go, oh, oh, and you hear this tremendous H before the high note. And that's what they're doing. They're trying to intensify uh, the voice. Sometimes uh, singers aren't doing it for the right reason. They're doing it because they're figuring out, I got to get that high note somehow, and I'm going to go and get it if I can. If you do these particular ones, another famous one is the lip clamp. This is not M and it's not a hum. It's a clamping the lips together very tightly. And then I go, mm, 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 mm. The response, for some reason, you can talk to the vocal scientists about this, but for some reason, it causes a tremendous intensification of the pressure of the breath against your diaphragm. And you go, mm, when you open, right, this relaxes, but this pressure down here remains. So I go, mm, ah, mm, ah. Hear that? So if I sing, if I sing that, uh, you know, other music, I go. It puts a kind of a, imposes a kind of legato on a much more intense sound. So if I vocalize, I go. If I go, hello, blow my breath out a little bit. So the 
idea is to learn if you have the right kind of voice and you better work with very experienced people because some of these things are very destructive to lyric voices. Lyric voices are, have vocal cords of a certain shape. The edges of the, uh, edges of the, of the vocal folds are rounder, smoother. Everything is, is, is a different, it's almost like a different instrument. Uh, it, it, depending on the individual person, but they've been categorizing voices for years and years, and very often they do it wrong. See, we should take what we've got. See that one? I'm doing nothing now. I'm going. What's my breath doing? I'm singing like that. If I blow part of my breath out and sing that again. If I put a hula in front of it again. See? Clamp would be. All of these make a different effect, a different sound, they have you express yourself differently. Um, if you're talking to someone in all these ways, they go, hi, how are you today? It's so nice to see you. I want to talk to you like that. It gets much more intense than if I go, hello, how are you today? It's so nice to see you. See? We have to know all the time what the breath is doing to the voice. If it's doing something to the voice, that is what you want, terrific, and it, none of these hurt. I, I learned all these from, from great singers. I learned the lip clamp from Helio Rosfange who sang 55 years, uh, seven days a week, three times a day, never had a vocal problem. You know, when you get this stuff from the great singers and you realize they've, they, they've actually used it and actually done it, some of them, like Richard Tucker, could sort of do anything. This guy was a, there was a magnificent lyrical spinto voice, and as he got older, his voice turned into a real big spinto voice, and he was great. Uh, some of the singers didn't seem to know as well what they should do and how they should do it, but we don't worry about them. They were great, and that's all there is to it. If I do, someone like Gili. Now, Gili and Lali Volpi both used a lot of falsetto. They were criticized by Alfredo Cross, saying both of them used too much falsetto. See? If I use a falsetto and go, it places my voice a certain way. Now, you can sing like that. What did then Gili do to intensify his voice? Because he sang a lot of, uh, you know, bigger repertoire, of a magnificent voice, of course, and was great friends with my old teacher, Olga Ries. And uh, he did something to intensify his voice. What did he do? Now, think about that. Listen to Gili recordings. He doesn't go, he goes, what does that little mini sob do to the intensification of your compression of your breath? If I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, Singers have choices. Singers, uh, especially artistic singers who want to act and make character and want to do the whole shebang. If they've got the imagination for it and the technique for it, it is fantastic to listen to. You get tremendous effects out of some of the really great singers. And uh, some of them are free to do whatever they want to do. Some of them are locked into to a certain technique. Uh, and that's the way it is. Lawrence Melchior had this, <clears throat> like that, and he kept that sort of pressure all over the chest and sang like that. <laughs> he wore a corset from here to here. I can't even show my lower body. <laughs> from here from, from here to here, I had a corset that squeezed him in, and he uh, used that corset and all that compression. And let's face it, he had a fantastic career and sang a long time. And I worked with him about five months, and... Uh, he sort of said, you are not a head of tenor. You are a lyric tenor. Therefore, you cannot do what I do. 
and he was right. <laughs> and I didn't try to do what he did either, because it's very, very dangerous to put all this compression on the voice, particularly young voices. And what was I at the time, 20, 24, 25? You know, I worked with Delmonico when I was, what, 22, 23? And Delmonico leaned everything right there on his sternal notch and went like that. He used to demonstrate like this. <laughs> and then sing there. So I go, That's that big megaphone singing. You create a great big megaphone. Your resonance goes up here like crazy. And of course, he had a voice like a house. Huge, huge voice. Um, how do we do all these things? Every one of them requires breath, breath, and breathing, and breath. If I breathe, if, let's say I want to sing here, like Delmonico. I tried, and damn near killed me, but <laughs> and I gave it up very soon, uh, because you've got to have the voice for that to, to do that. But anyway, technically, I was able to do it, and he liked some of it, and he said, you know, give it a few years. Wait, wait a few years. Maybe it's too soon. <laughs> anyway, I'm on a recording of uh, Otello with him, singing Otello, and I'm doing the little role of Rodrigo, and you hear me trying to, I was studying with him at the time, and I, you hear me trying to imitate him, right? And my line is, da forgot me. Drown myself, right? And uh, Iago asked me a question, and I go, I forgot, man. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. It was, it was, it was, let's say absurd. It really was absurd. I shouldn't have been. So there's a great moral there. Never imitate anybody, because you don't have the same voice, the same thread, the same breathing, same breathing development. You haven't gotten anything like anybody else. You just have what you have. So uh, we want to know, in certain kind of voices, we want to know, do they need this extra compression? Some voices do. True spinto voices, like uh, like uh, Giovanni Martinelli, for instance, uh, they need that extra compression to get the voice to respond. And that's why this thing became uh, called a spinto method. See? You breathe, then you let a little bit out, and you sing. Ah, ha, ha. Now, can I do that all night? Well, it's pretty harmless, frankly. I mean, it's not, you, you sing this way for a while, you get strong. So the, 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 the most important question there is, what kind of vocal cords do you have? If you have those that, that require that, that's the safest. If you have the kind of voice that can do that and do lyric also, you're Lico Spinto, and you'll probably be all right, but you can't use that technique all the time. You learn how to, you have to learn to mix your techniques, right? If you go, Do I really want to compress that? Or do I want to sing it lyrically? Well, Martinelli sang it very, very Spinto-ish. And, of course, it's magnificent, the way he sang. He sang in a long career. I met him when he was 77. 77. I said, what did your teachers tell you back then about how to breathe? And he said, qui respirare, which means here, breathe. E qui postare, which means put it here. Right? And that was his technique. So then I asked Richard Tucker, the first time I sang for him, well, you know, tell me, what do you do when you sing? He said, you breathe behind you, and you sing in front of you. So it was... Uh, I was gradually getting this is a pretty common concept. Now, add to that, ha, ha, ha. Now what do I do? So I take that falsetto-y sound, and then I cluck with it. I go, ha, and they used to call it sobbing, but it's not really a sob. It's really an old method called the falsetto attachment. And when I go, I'm right there. What kind of emission of the breath is that? So what am I doing if I use that kind of emission? See? That kind of attack. If I want to intensify that, then we're talking today about several different methods of intensification, right? The lip clamp it again. Hmm. Imposes legato on the sound also. What about hla? 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 Every one of those has uh, 
has an effect of some kind. Gili used his falsetto attachment and used it all the time. My teacher loved him, was great friends with him. She said, I'm not going to go hear him in the opera anymore because he sobs too much. But when he sings songs, it's fantastic. <laughs> so we should all be able to make one of those tones like those guys can make, right? Uh, it's just interesting to know that for the young singers of today who people are telling you to do things and you better know what they're telling you. They better know what they're doing because absolutely you can look guys, voices are being ruined right and left. You know that. Some of the best young singers, the best young talent that we've had here in the past 10, 15 years, just the voice is a mess now. See? Nothing goes through here but air. So if the air is out of control or over compressed or anything like that, it's going to wear on the voice. Sometimes it damages it all in one note. Uh, the story goes that Franco Corelli you know, was doing Otello, learned Otello, and uh, his wife apparently talked him into trying out the bowing the neck method. Now, if I sing normally, and Corelli especially used to sing like this with his head way up. He'd sing, ah, ha, 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 ha. Now, all of a sudden he started bowing his neck, doing that. Now listen to the sound difference. All of a sudden the voice is getting darker, rounder, and bigger. If I sing Otello, do I sing, Or do I sing, Or do I sing, it sounds bigger. I can hear the room. I'm in here. Where, I'm in a great big room here. You can see how big it is, right? And the room is echoing like mad. <laughs> and it's, so it's big. It's so satisfying to make that big sound, isn't it? Except that he blew a nerve in his vocal cords. It's very dangerous, even with a magnificent singer like Corelli. It's very dangerous, even for the very best ones, to start messing around and change something and start blowing more air. Because remember, air is the only thing that goes through here. It's the only thing that can hurt you. See? And that's why you have so much breath stop study. So many people do, do, uh, uh, people do this kind of thing all the time. This is one of the oldest exercises that you're singing, see? Ba, 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 Why doesn't the paper move? In one, in one, ascondo la mia vera tortura. Why doesn't the paper move? Right? Look. In one, in one, ascondo la mia vera Why would I let air leak through my vocal cords? When I have all of these control stopping methods that instigate pressure of the breath against my diaphragm from my lower back. Remember Martinelli. Qui respirare. So I'm going to breathe way down my lower back. And then one way or another, I'm going to lean the breath of my diaphragm. So I can either just exhale. Or I can sob. Or I can go hala. Hello. Or I can breathe in and let some of my air out. Ah. There are all these different things that happen to the voice depending on the way you breathe in and depending on what you do with the breath once you have it. The one thing that was common in my lifetime, I'm 81 now, and I've been, I'm looking back a long time. I've been teaching 62 years. And when I, I was got into the Metropolitan Opera School uh, when I was, what, 21? And uh, I, I coached with all those fantastic coaches that had been at La Scala. Was, uh, Victor Trucco was at La, La Scala 40 or 50 years before he ever came to New York. He was in his 70s when I was working with him. And uh, those guys had heard something in La Scala way back when, you know, when the greatest singers in the world were singing there. And they knew, they knew things that people don't know anymore. And they knew that everything was breathing. And now you talk about, you, go, you work with coaches, they don't breathe. You know, don't breathe. Well, if you don't breathe, if I stand there like this, and I don't breathe, and I'm like, bang, I'm dead, I'm sitting here like this. And if I start singing, ah, it puts me in a compression method because the only way I can get the air out is to send it out and my rib cage starts to squeeze. So the whole point of breathing in, so Caruso called it massive respiration, required, I love that word, for great singing. And uh, Manuel, Manuel Garcia, the second, the great voice teacher, uh, 
called it the super abundance of the breath. The reason you do that is so you don't have to squeeze. You don't have to squeeze if you don't want to. Then go, and now I can just sigh. See? So people associate that sighing and that exhale much more with lyric singing than they do with compression and dramatic singing. So uh, we went through, let's see, we did lip clamp. We did la, 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 la. See? We do all of these. We get so we go. And you've got a number of compression possibilities. And be careful because they can ruin a lyric voice. Remember that. So the ideal way, especially for young singers, is to start out. It's just by exhaling. You've been exhaling all your life since you were born. You're an expert at exhaling. Think about it. I'm going to take a breath. So I take the breath down behind me because some great singer said to do so. In fact, any number of great singers said to do so. So I breathe down there. Then I guide this exhalation. Instead of exhaling up through my mouth and my throat, I exhale into my diaphragm. And I go, like that. So I go, now I'm going to sing like that. Why isn't that enough? See? In one, in one, nascondo la mia vera tortura. Amo mi mi. All I have to do is just go. I'm not even sighing. I'm just exhaling. But sighing will work too. Uh, Tito Skipa used it. Claudio Muzio used it. So. I guess if I have a mission, my mission would be to get everyone to understand that the voice is always the result of what you do with the air. If I do this, ah, oh, anything I do like that, any action, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So any action that I do is going to react in my breath. So that means if I lift, if I close, what if I sing, Ah, what am I saying up there? What's my breath doing? Ah, ah, what's my breathing doing? So the old idea in the old school, in the way I was taught by these fabulous old singers, and let's face it, they were all in their 70s when I met them. Uh, uh, and, you know, Jan Pierce, and, and, and I, mean, I, I can't even remember all the great singers that I talked to and was exposed to and got tips from. And they all breathed in the lower backs, and then they did something with their breathing that kept the pressures off of the throat. And none of them sang up here, and nobody lifted their soft palate. Oh. To, when you hear the voice covering today, and you're, oh, 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 use vowel modifications to lift the palate and all, those things cause a reaction in the breathing. So what if I take the breath, and I go, and I go, Let's say I'll just, I'll just exhale. See? It still passes or covers, as they, as they call it in America, but I'm not manipulating my throat or using my soft palate. See? Wide open. That's wrong because it breaks the first rule of great singing, which is no action in the throat. If I go, ah, ah, I'm, I'm using an action. But what if I do nothing? Then that, that type of covering, that was the passing the voice up into the head, uh, is acceptable. What kind of breathing system does it require? What kind of support system? So I thought I would spend a little time on these uh, instigators. And uh, let's see if we can find the instigator that is the one that is for you. See? And the fact that, listen, if I went back to work, I'm 81. Let's say I want to go make a comeback and I want to go back and sing again. What role would I sing and what, what, what would I really do? I don't even know. I don't know what this I would use because I've done, I can do them all. But can I do one for four hours? I don't know. 
<laughs> so anyway, I thought we would uh, talk about that a little bit and that you would enjoy that a little bit. Okay? See ya. Bye. Hmm.